Hello and welcome to this video where I'm going to introduce you to fractions. Now, in my experience of teaching maths, fractions cause all sorts of problems. And they shouldn't really, as long as we right at the beginning understand that a fraction is part of a whole. I don't mean a hole like in the middle of a polo, I mean a hole as in the whole complete thing. Let's get going and I will use the time on it way of this piece of paper. Here I have a piece of paper. It is a hole. Now from a very early age we get into the idea that if I split something into two equal halves like I'm going to do here. So you're with your brother or your sister and you have a bar of chocolate or a pizza and you're forced to share it with your brother or sister, you have a half and they have a half. There we go. And you can see that here. So that is my hole. And I have split it into a half. I'm just doing that lightly so it doesn't go through. And that is the other half. Um, and that is the basis of fractions. And what it actually means, and we're going to come back to this a lot, is what I've done is I've got my hole and I have split it into two bits. There we go. And that is what the bottom number always means. So I'm now going to write a fraction. I'm going to write a half here. The bottom number is how many we split it into. And the top number is how many of those actual bits I've got. So this here is one part out of two parts. Let me fold this again. Now fractions is very closely connected with dividing. And you'll remember when I spoke to you about dividing, that the important thing with dividing is that it's equal. And it's exactly the same with fractions. The bits that you split your whole into have to be equal. So let's turn this over. Now I hope you can see I have now split my whole into one, two, three, four. Use this pen so it doesn't go through. So whatever is, there we go, the bottom bit on here has to be four because I've split it into four bits. And that is one out of four. So it's going to have one here because each of those is a quarter. I'm going to put this down here for a second and I'm going to write here what these bits are. So this is how many I split it into. How many I split the hole into and this top bit here is how many right, bits how many bits I want now I haven't got enough paper and I'm not very good at folding to keep doing it in folding so I'm gonna actually draw this for you now now you know how good my drawing skills are so it might not look great now, if you've seen this before, lots of they nearly always draw circles and say it's a pizza. Now, don't get me wrong, I like pizza as much as the next person. But the problem is, is trying to split circles up gets tricky. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw an oblong here, a rectangle. And this is a bar. And there's a way of teaching maths and learning called the bar method, which I think is just so good when it comes to fractions. So here is my hole. If I split it into two pieces here, clearly that is one half and that is another half. Let me do exactly the same with my bar. And the sooner you get working with bars, the better, because they could become so useful in explaining fractions and all sorts of things as we carry on. Now this time I'm going to split my bar, and this could be anything. This bar can represent chocolate, it could be a, a 
ice cream, it could be anything you want it at all. But I'm going to split this whole, now I'm going to split it into four. Now remember, they must be equal. So now I've split that into four, so it will have to be one, that's one part out of four. One part out of four, one part out of four, one part out of four. And I can keep on doing that all the time. So here, this time I'm going to split this one into eight different bits. So I split it into half first. Now I've split it into quarters. And if I split each one of these down here, each one of those is now worth one eighth. Don't often get to use my fountain pen here. And you can see how badly I actually hold my pen. So each of those is one part out of eight. And I can keep doing that until the cows come home. Okay, let me show you. So here's my oblong. Let's split this one into three groups. They that isn't these should be exactly the same size. I'm just doing it by eye, so it's a bit off, but here we go. I've split the whole into three. So the bottom number must be three. And each one of those is one. I could do this absolutely forever. Let's do this into five. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five. So each one of these is worth one fifth. And I'm going to use this bar lots because it's really, really useful. Because what I can do with bars is I can then draw underneath it. If I draw a line underneath like this. And now I've split this into two different sections here. But this time they're not the same size. But I can tell exactly what size they both are by looking above. Now here, this is the same as one fifth and one fifth, so that is two fifths. And this is one, two, three, that is three fifths. Well, I'm going to leave that for another lesson um, where I'm going to explain how we can combine these fractions. And essentially, I'm going to tell you all about fractions, everything you need to know over a series of videos. The main thing I want you to remember from this one is that a fraction is part of a whole. You've got a whole, you split it up into a number of pieces, in this case it's four, and that's always the bottom number, is going to be how many I split it into, and the top number is how many of those bits I want. So just going back to here, you can see I've split it into five, but this bit I've taken two of those bits, and on this side I've taken three of those bits. Don't worry about fractions, they cause lots of confusion, but they are in fact no problem. So have a look, watch it again, and join me in the next video where I take you on to the next part of fractions.